Hello everyone, my name is Heather and welcome back to my channel. If you've been subscribed to my channel for a while, you'll know that for the past just about a year now, I have been in the process of going cruelty free. So what is cruelty free? That is buying products, uh, skincare, makeup, um, household products that are not tested on animals. The brands don't test any of their products on animals and nor are they willing to test their products on animals where required by law. I feel like I've learned a lot this past year and I kind of wanted to share what I've learned with you guys. Um, you might not all be subscribed to me, maybe you clicked on this video because you were searching and researching how to go cruelty free. So I'm going to share my advice with you. I'm sure there's a lot more advice out there and I actually just highly recommend you guys go search out more information for yourselves because that's what I did. Although it just would have been great if I had found a video like what I'm about to do for you guys for myself. So here are 10 tips on how to go cruelty free. My first tip is to figure out why you want to go cruelty free because here's the thing if you don't know why you're going cruelty free you will inevitably encounter a product that you really really want especially if you are an avid youtube watcher like i am you see ads for products all the time and not just i'm not just talking in the advertisements i'm talking um some of your favorite youtubers are going to be talking about products that they're really really excited about and a lot of the time they're not cruelty free so you have to be really sure of why you were going cruelty free so that you can kind of avoid that urge to buy that thing. Tip number two, learn what it means to be cruelty free. A brand that is cruelty free does not test its finished products on animals, it doesn't test its ingredients on animals, and its suppliers do not test any ingredients on animals. And finally, and this is one of the most important things, is the brand is not even willing to test on animals where required by law. So just so you know, the only country in the world that requires international brands to test its products on animals is mainland China. So not Hong Kong, Hong Kong is fine. It's mainland China that requires any international brand to test its products on animals at its own expense, by the way. So China is like, we're not paying for it. If you wanna sell your products here, you need to pay for your products to be tested on animals. So this disqualifies so many brands from being cruelty free just because they expanded their market into, or they expanded their brand into the Chinese market. So just as a recent example, uh, the brand NARS actually used to be cruelty free, but they just recently expanded into China and so now they're not cruelty free. Tip number three is to decide how picky you want to be about being cruelty free. So what I mean by this is so many of our favorite brands are actually owned by parent companies, okay? So the brand Urban Decay, for example, is owned by the company L'Oreal. L'Oreal is not cruelty free. It has, it sells its products in China, but Urban Decay is a cruelty free brand in my opinion and also in the opinion of other cruelty free people in the community because none of Urban Decay's products are tested on animals nor are the ingredients tested on animals, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, and Urban Decay does not sell in China. So here's what some people think. Some people think that Urban Decay is not cruelty free because it's owned by L'Oreal. So they will refuse to support Urban Decay and that's perfectly fine. That is their choice, absolutely. The perspective that I come from and what a lot of other people come from as well is by buying only Urban Decay or what's another example of a company NYX is also owned by L'Oreal, I believe, as well as A Cosmetics. So those are cruelty-free brands that are owned by L'Oreal. So me buying only these cruelty-free brands that L'Oreal owns, maybe, hopefully, in a perfect world, might tell L'Oreal that that is one of my values, is I value animal safety. And hopefully, maybe someday they'll make a change, or maybe, China will change its laws, I don't know. And you know what? Our voice does help, by the way, because a company that pulled out of China recently is 
Stila. So you might know about like the Stila stay all day liquid eyeliner and lipstick and everything like that. So they used to not be cruelty free because they were in China and now they have pulled out of China and are now cruelty free. Tip number four is to start slowly. Don't just go through your makeup collection and throw out all the products that aren't cruelty free. That's a waste. It's a waste of your money. Um, and it's just not necessary. You already bought the products. You might as well use them up. So slowly as you use things up, start replacing those items with cruelty free alternatives. Step number five is to do your best to memorize brands that are cruelty free. So obviously it's nigh on impossible to memorize every single cruelty free brand out there, but if you kind of like glance at the list often, and by the way, the list I like to refer to is cruelty free kitties list of cruelty free brands. Um, but even she has so many, you can't memorize it. But what I like to do is as I may be shopping on Sephora, I will, flip back between pages to kind of get into my head what are cruelty free brands and what aren't and you know what you're gonna make mistakes because I mean, I did. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm at all close to perfect. I was shopping on Sephora. I had made the decision to shop cruelty free. And for some reason, I thought Bosha was cruelty free. And I thought, oh, I remember that Bosha is cruelty free. Um, and I bought something from Bosha. And then I went back and I looked and I saw that they weren't cruelty free. Um, so I was like, oh, well, crap. <laughs> I made a mistake and I thought I had that memorized. What I really should have done is kind of checked that. Um, but it's helpful to remember some of the, the bigger brands that are cruelty free. I mean, you've got Kat Von D, Urban Decay, Tarte, Too Faced. A lot of these big brands are cruelty free. And when you kind of get that into your head, it makes it a little bit easier to shop. Step number six is to know where to look online for reference. So I mentioned Cruelty Free Kitty. You just go to cruelty-free-kitty.com and she has got a very, very extensive list of cruelty free brands. She also talks about what brands are definitely not cruelty free. So she talks about like what brands to avoid. She goes into a little more detail about what animal testing is actually like and you kind of get that like image in your head but she's not the only source out there you also have logical harmony you have ethical elephant and i'm sure there are many others those are just the three that i have encountered in my research online and another thing that i've actually just recently learned is to kind of do a little bit of cross-referencing because i actually thought that shea moisture was cruelty free because it's on Cruelty Free Kitty's list of cruelty free products or brands. Um, but then one of you lovely people commented on my empties video saying that Shave Moisture is actually on Logical Harmony's list of brands to avoid. And that's because they just weren't 100% like, they thought that maybe some of their ingredients might have been tested on animals. I don't, I have to look back and see what the details are. But because of that, like it kind of reminds me to like, cross-reference because some people have done just a little bit more research into the brands than others. Like Shea Moisture, probably it's easy to just look at them and say, oh, they're cruelty free. It's on the back. I think they're even Leaving Bunny certified. Step number seven, do not be afraid to directly contact a brand that you can't find any information on. So an example of this is Zio Skin Health. This is a skincare brand that I encountered when I was working at a medical spa and I couldn't find anything on this brand and so I just emailed them directly. I asked them all the questions. Do you test your products on animals? Do you sell in mainland China? That's also pretty easy to search. I just searched if you could buy it in mainland China and you and you cannot. Um, do you test your ingredients on animals etc etc and they got back to me and it turns out that they are cruelty free so I don't feel bad about supporting them. Them. Tip number eight is to know your labels. So Cruelty Free Kitty has a pretty good resource on the different labels uh, that may or may not mean a brand is cruelty free. So Leaping Bunny certified, there's a little a logo of like a leaping bunny. Um, there's PETA, but PETA is not as picky, I don't think, as Leaping Bunny. I think that even if they sell in China, 
PETA still considers them cruelty free. That's been my experience anyway. I'll like search a brand on PETA and they say it's cruelty free, but cruelty free kitties like no, they sell in mainland China. So anyway, um, I'm gonna link that resource down in the description box just because off the top of my head, I can't like think of every single logo that there is out there, but it's just important to know that you can't trust all of the logos that say a brand is cruelty free. Tip number nine is kind of goes along with starting slowly, but moves a little deeper into uh, incorporating other parts of your like daily routine and making them cruelty free. So starting with makeup is pretty easy. Well, easy but it's simpler so you can just kind of focus on one thing but I highly encourage you to kind of start looking into going cruelty free with your skincare and your hair care and then even moving into your household cleaning supplies so I recommend that being kind of the last step because I feel like for most of us it involves other members of the family that you have to kind of get them on board i mean honestly like i haven't gotten my husband on board with being cruelty free 100 percent we've switched the majority of our laundry supplies to cruelty free and like our hand soaps but it's not going to be 100 percent right away it's going to take a really long time i am not 100 percent cruelty free it's it's hard, it's really, really hard, and you do have to make some sacrifices. And finally, step number 10 is to remember your motivation. So like I said, going cruelty-free does take sacrifice. I think it helps to continue to do your research on it, and like I mentioned earlier, what the animals go through, kind of looking into that, makes it a little more tangible and kind of gives you that motivation again you know to continue shopping cruelty free because otherwise you might just kind of fall back on your old favorite brands that aren't cruelty free but maybe you're just like oh it's not that important to me and i do want to say that if it's not important to you if you if you honestly just don't care that's fine i mean i'm not judging you if other people are judging you then just ignore it i'm not it's everyone's choice how they want to spend their money yeah it's hurting animals but if you just if that's just not one of your values i can't make you value that and no one can make you value anything and that's just how the world works some cruelty free people might be like yelling at me right now like no we have to make everyone be cruelty free and that's just not realistic it's like a vegan or a vegetarian trying to make everyone vegan or vegetarian to save the animals and the reality is that just not everyone cares and that's fine maybe they care about other things you know that we don't care about so that's just the way the world works but you probably clicked on this video because you do want to go cruelty free so if you do that means you probably care and it's just important to remember your motivation. And just in my opinion, I think animal testing is heartbreaking, it's unnecessary. Honestly, there are so many ingredients that have been proven safe for humans that animal testing just shouldn't happen anymore. Another thing to keep in mind is that just because a company isn't cruelty free, it doesn't make them an unethical company in general. I was actually just doing some research on L'Oreal and they were named one of the most ethical companies in the world and I can't for the life of me remember why but in the article it does mention that they're not cruelty free but like the CEO or something of L'Oreal was like but we do so many other things that are good for the world and they are doing a lot of research on how to not test their products on animals basically alternative ways of testing their products so they're they are trying but they still want to make their money so it's just kind of a little bit of a gray area and that's another reason why i don't mind buying products um from brands that are owned by l'oreal because in a way i know that l'oreal is not an evil company you know i just I have my values, they have their values, and hopefully all together we can kind of make the world a little bit of a better place. Even if they're still testing on animals, maybe they're donating to charities. With all of that said, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. And you know what? I am not an expert on the subject at all. This is just what I have learned. And I do want to say, if 
any of what I'm saying is like wrong, like totally wrong, please correct me in the comments and I will learn from my mistakes basically. And I really learn a lot from you guys. So when you guys comment, I read all of your comments. I try to respond to all of them. And I just really appreciate you guys educating me because I know that I still have a lot to learn about a lot of things. <laughs> Don't be afraid to correct me at all. Most of the time you guys are not afraid to correct me, which is great. I value that. Um, I love constructive criticism. Please subscribe to my channel if you feel like you could learn more from me or if you enjoy uh, videos on this topic or if you enjoy videos on minimalism. I also do uh, Project Pan videos and lately I've been, you know, I've been panning a lot of non-cruelty free products to make room for more cruelty free products it's kind of that's been my plan all along um, and I also do bullet journal videos so if any of that interests you I'd love to have you as one of my subscribers give this video a thumbs up if you liked it I can't remember if I already said that and I will see you guys in my next video bye